Hello, it's Elizabeth from A Tale of Yarn. Hopefully you've had some fun spinning some yarn with a stick. So, if you have, you might have a collection of little bits of yarn and you might be wondering what to do with it. Well, now's the time to find out because this is what you do when you've spun lots of yarn and you want to ply it together to make a stronger yarn or a, um, a thicker yarn, just like the one I've got wrapped around my cart. So, here's what you do. So if you remember, here's the one I did earlier. So that's the single yarn that I'd spun earlier that I showed. And then this is the one that I've just finished spinning on my stick. So I need to now take this off of here because I need to use the stick to ply. That means to twist the two yarns together. So you spin the yarn, a single yarn, and you ply together um, more than one yarn. So I'm going to use um, an Ostapin or porridge stirrer, funny um, getter out of pot thing, um, anything um, that is slightly, has got a slightly wider um, girth so that um, you can have a, um, a centre pull ball. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap um, what's called a, a noster pin, which means a nest pin, it's Scandinavian for meaning nest pin, and it's the way of wrapping yarn to make a centre pull ball, which is really useful. Um, especially when you're knitting, crocheting, anything at all really. So this is a super other skill to learn. So put the end of your yarn around the handly bit. Again, any stick will do. Um, and this time we're going to wrap. But what we're going to do is we're going to wrap and we're going to go from um, the bottom bit, which is by your thumb. And you're going to wrap the yarn around the stick. And as you go, you're going to wrap from the bottom to the top. So you're going to wrap very carefully and turn your stick around as you go. So wrapping your yarn from the bottom to the top. Okay, so this is not spinning. This is just wrapping a centre pull ball using a nost pin. So as you can see, it's coming, it's unraveling itself from my stick that I've used to spin with. As you can see, we're making a beautiful little pattern here um, that looks like those commercially wrapped cakes of yarn. So I'm in, in fact wrapping a yarn cake here, but I'm using a Noster pin and a special way of winding, going from the bottom bit nearest my thumb up to the top nearest my top finger. So bottom to top and turning, you can see I'm turning the stick, the Noster pin, the spurtle, the honey stir thing, whatever it is, as I'm going. Oh, look. There's that little chuffy bit. Remember that from the stick spinning. It's going to be exciting using that. So I'm going top to bottom, wrapping this around, getting a neat little ball. And what this does is gives me a centre pull ball, because you can see that thread that's um, there, down there by my thumb. That's um, the end we started with. Oh, and now we've come off the... Look, what a tatty end that is. I might use that bit first. We've come off the stick, so the stick is now free, and I have, if I carefully pull this one off here, I've got one little ball of yarn, beautifully wrapped, and another little ball of yarn, beautifully wrapped, and they are now ready to be plied together. So, get two of the ends, and put them together. And they're going to hopefully hang freely and not get themselves too tangled up. I'm gonna hold those two pieces of spun yarn the two ends together and just like we did when we started spinning I'm going to wrap these around but I'm not going to go away from myself I'm going to come back towards myself so remember that song wind the bobbin up pull pull clap 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 well the second verse is wind it back again pull pull clap 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 and if you wind it back again you will be putting a counter twist on the two pieces of yarn and that will help them to ply together. I'm not going to worry about all this fluffiness because when it gets plied together it's going to look great. So I generally tend to keep the two yarns a little bit separate with my fingers but I still work on a small amount of yarn again just like we did when we were spinning. So wind it back again horizontally, wind it back again. I'm using a little bit more this time and then gently pull it apart again 
unwind, let it unwind again. Wind it back again. Oh, doing too much here now, I'm going slightly cockeyed. There we go. And then wind it, um, pull, pull again. And that little fluffy bit has got caught in. So wind it back again and pull, pull. And as you can see, the, white, the yarn is now starting to twist itself together and it is looking a little bit more like um, the commercial yarn that you probably used to. So pull the two, um, pull the yarn off the two balls and then wind it back towards yourself horizontally. Then letting it unwind again. You can see the fibres are starting to ply together. You'll probably find as well that you don't need to wind this and pull it back as many times as you did when you're spinning. So let the two balls unwind while you are winding this back again towards yourself. Then vertically pull. You'll find that the twist um, when you're spinning or when you're plying will there'll be more twist on the thinner parts and less twist on the thicker parts. So you can use that as a feature of your yarn or if you're quite determined to um, get rid of the, the thicker bits, you can just work on that thicker bit, for example. Um, so wind it back again, and I could keep working on that to see if I could get some more twist on. Don't particularly want to. Oh, what's happening here? Oh, look, the inside is trying to get caught up. Look at that, naughty yarn. There we go. So again, there's some, there's, oh look, there's that fluffy bit. Remember that fluffy bit. So let's, um, let's wind that, wind that back again. Wind that back again. Then I'm going to pull, oh, there it is, look. Wind it back again. Try not to pull out too much when you're working on this, I just have. And I'm now having to flail my arms wildly, which is, not at all acceptable, there we go. So there's that little chuffy bit. He's got caught up in there. And it's not looking quite as bad as it might have done. So remember to pull the, the yarns, straighten them out as you go to. So here we go, wind it back again and pull. There we go. Wind it back again and pull. I think I'm going to not pull too far on this. And you'll probably find as well that the, the two yarns are beginning to twist themselves together because um, they do like they do like to be twisted together. There we go. So I'm going to keep going on this now. So apply them back together again. So wind it back, to, wind it back, and pull. As you can see, you're getting quite an interesting yarn. So. Use your judgment if you want a fairly loose plied yarn. Don't wind it up too many times. If you want a little bit of a tighter one, because I prefer that. There. there we go, I'm preferring that. So I've wound that one up again. So I'm now going to work on this little bit here. And again, your spiral plied yarn, your two ply yarn can be used for knitting or for crochet. So this is going to make quite a chunky yarn or it can be used for weaving used to tie your parcels up and just have fun with the yarn you've got. You might be thinking, oh, but I haven't got enough to do anything with. If you get, um, if you are knitting, um, you can use this as a contrast yarn. So if you are knitting and uh, maybe some cream aran, you could use this as a contrast stripe in the cream aran that you're knitting. Um, what you can do as well is crochet a granny square out of this then get some more fibre and spin that up crochet another granny square and you can end up with a beautiful sampler of all your first hand spun yarn made up into a granny square or knitted afghan squares as well so there we go I'm nearly at the end here there we go let's just wind that one up again nearly at the end I've got oh look at that oh fantastic Look at that, they've just about the same amount of fibre. How did I know how I was going to do that? So I'm going to go up to the end, pull, pull, pull. So wind it back again, 
pull, 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 remembering to unwind, letting it unwind rather than pulling off. And then the last little bit, just to get that to go. Wow, look at that, there we go. And then again, you can wind this onto your nostril pin so that you'll have a two ply ball. So I'm going to go from the bottom to the top as you wind around, turning your nostril pin around as you're winding your wall onto there from the bottom to the top. And as you can see, you will get some very twisted, very um, plied, and some which is not quite so tightly plied. There we go, making a little cake of yarn. Oh, that, thing wasn't, that wasn't very even, was it? There we go. And then, oh, there's that chuffy bit. Is it? Oh no, yes it is. No, it's not. Yes it is. Oh, can't quite see. There we go. I'm very carefully winding this over. I think I'm getting to the end now. But there we go. A little bit of hand spun yarn. And that's been plied. So it's ready to go. Ideally, you should set your yarn, so that means um, putting it in some hot water with a little bit of fabric conditioner um, and letting the water cool and then squeezing out the excess water and then hanging your yarn up to dry. But do you know what? That could be ready to go now. So enjoy, have fun and don't forget, if you check out the blog on my website, there are other tutorials and Lots of free patterns for things that you can crochet with your yarn that you've spun. Thank you for watching.